and it also made me appreciate everything I have. They have nothing in there. Like she said, they're very happy. So it made me appreciate everything. So, yeah. We got to help a little over 600 people and lead about 300, four, five people to Christ. One of them being my first I got to lead. And I was working in first aid and in glucose. It was a little bit sad seeing all the children that had all the health issues that we had to fix or that we didn't have anything there that we could fix, but no matter what, they were helping and always kind, or happy and always kind to us for trying to help. But yeah, it was, sad leaving them all. And one day at lunch, she was talking to me and saying, 
I have to remember all these things that, that Mark's saying. I have to remember so when I go home, I can tell people, and I can do this when I'm at home. And it just struck me, and I had to tell her, Bonnie, you don't have to remember any of the special words that Mark's saying. You just have to remember to love, to tell them about Jesus, and to ask, do you want to know him? And I think, especially in our culture, maybe not especially, but here in Petaluma and in Sonoma County, it can be hard to share. Because as soon as you say you're a Christian, sometimes you're looked down upon, sometimes they think you hate them. All of the misconceptions of what it means to be who we are. But God asks us to share, to tell them he loves them, and to ask them, would you like to know him? I was at a conference yesterday and something kind of correlated to me. A man was talking about, what if the boy who had the fish and loaves didn't offer them? Thousands of people wouldn't have been able to see what Jesus could do. So my takeaway, and what I felt like I needed to share, was that it doesn't matter if all you have is a fish and a loaf of bread. It doesn't matter if you can't remember scriptures. I remember what the Lord says. I don't remember the scripture reference. I have to go find it all the time. It doesn't matter. People don't need to know if it was in Timothy, Mark, or John. They just need to hear the truth. So it's our job to share. Tell them Jesus loves them. But don't forget to ask. One other thing that was said yesterday is there was a boy who came as an um, exchange student. He ended up in a Christian home. Every week they asked him, do you want to go to church? Do you want to go to church? And they thought they were doing what they should do by inviting him. And he never came to church. He never wanted to go. He didn't get it. He didn't know why he should. And he went back home, I think it was to Africa. And somebody talked with him about Jesus in the moment in his face and asked, do you want to know him? And he accepted Christ. And he wrote back to his exchange parents and said, why didn't you just ever tell me? I know Jesus now, but all that time that you asked me to go to church, why didn't you just tell me about Jesus? So, imagine what would happen if this room, if all of us went out and shared, and we were bold, like Bonnie was, praying with Mark, and helping 346 souls come to know the Lord. We might need a new building. <laughs>
We were on the boat a couple times. We were on what I call like a military transport where you load in the back of this truck and you're on benches and, and the roads were slick. It rained all week long until the very end. The roads were slick and muddy and we were actually sliding in the mud and the ocean was right there. So, but God was faithful. God protected us through all of that. So I just was so aware of his goodness to us and to the Fijian people by bringing our team because we really did provide services they don't have access to. To get a pair of readers, they would have to find their way into one of the big cities and pay the equivalent of 100 US dollars to get a pair of readers that we can get at the dollar store for $1.25. So um, that was just a huge blessing. My favorite, favorite part, of course, was that little window that I got with the kids. They were just like little sponges and I got to do some gospel things with them and they just took it all in and that was just a very special blessing. Um, I guess what I love the most about going on a missions trip is just your focus. That time is just completely dedicated to serving the Lord. And yes, that's how we should be living here. I'm trying, I'm trying so hard because it's just so wonderful knowing that you are on mission every day from the time you get up until you go to sleep and then you get to do it again the next day. It's just so wonderful and so powerful. So um, yeah, I do put that challenge out to all of you. I hope every single one of you can go to Fiji. It was the most fabulous experience. And I just am looking forward to wherever God sends us. changing trip, you come home, and a couple of days later, the temptation is to go right back to the way that you were before you left. Um, you settle back into life, school starting, you go back to work, and so would you just extend a hand towards them? We want to pray for them that they would continue to remain changed from this trip. God, we thank you so much for these who you chose to send on this trip, and Lord, as they settle back in now at home, we pray, God, that the change that took place on this trip wouldn't be for the trip, but God, it would be for life. It would be for these coming weeks and months. And God, that the work that you've done in their hearts would continue to just be a seed that grows. God, would they grow closer to you? Would they continue to spend time in your presence? Would they continue to serve those who are in need? Would they continue to be bold in sharing their faith and offering to pray for those who are in need? God, thank you for this time. We pray that you bless them as they reintegrate back home. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You guys can all head back down to Jack and be And then in that, uh, I did want to make an announcement. We told you uh, later today we get to meet our new kids director, but um, through the process, we chatted with Jackie. We got her on this missions trip. Uh, and then what I also get to announce to you today is Jackie is going to be our new missions director. <laughs>
5, Jesus said, The blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, the dead are raised to life, the good news is being preached to the poor. Uh, we got to live that out. Sometimes we think it's only supernatural and you lay hands on a person with blind eyes and then they suddenly see and that happens as well. But we brought glasses to people who were blind and they could see. Uh, we, we, Matthew, uh, cleaned people's ears and just tons of disgusting stuff that came out. I was not near the first aid department at all. But Matthew was, and ears were cleared out and the deaf could hear. People with a death sentence from a doctor said, this is terminal, got prayed for, experienced healing, and life was given back to them, and most importantly, the gospel of Jesus. The good news that he came, he died on the cross for us to be forgiven of our sins. He resurrected from the grave so that we could experience eternal life took place. And, and so, so here's the thing. God's heart is for missions. It's for lost people to find him. And, and so I have two quick stories I want to share with you. Uh, for me, I think if you have a photo, you put that first one up. Um, of We were in a village. There we are. In Navabe, uh, this is us at the eyeglass part of it. But, but the church that we're in, we're off this kind of built-off area, but right through that doorway there is this church. And I got to spend about an hour or so with the pastor when the glasses slowed down a little bit and got to hear a story that in 2017, a hurricane came through and the church had just been built, brand new, had been there nine months. His house was right next to to the church, brand new, nine months old. Hurricane came through, wiped it completely off the planet. And, and so it was just gone, and he didn't know what to do. And so they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. And somehow, miraculously, he told me, we didn't have any money left after building this building. Someone donated lumber. Someone donated tile. The work was donated. And nine months later, this facility that we were at, his house, the whole village was restored and rebuilt. And, uh, and it was just a miracle. And so hearing this pastor who uh, was like, Pastor, you know, let me learn from you. Let me talk with you. Here's what I'm doing. And we got to talk about some different ministry things and, and, and other things. But, but it was just impactful to me to hear his faith and trust in the Lord. If something goes wrong here, right, we need a new sound and light system last year. We asked you to give. You gave. And we were able to do it. And sometimes I think maybe we take that for granted, that, that collectively amongst us there's enough to get some things done. But this pastor couldn't go to the church. They didn't have any resources. They didn't have any money to do these things. And so all he could do was pray and trust the Lord. And then we got to come and into this five-year-old building that came after nine months of a nine-month-old building having been destroyed. And, and just the miracle of it. Uh, I thought was a testament to one, man, we are so lucky, and we have so much to be grateful for, and we can get probably way more done um, than, than someone in the jungle in Fiji because of the resources the Lord has given to us already, but secondly, just his hope and trust and faith that God would provide was, was touching. If you go to the next one, um, in Dama, uh, I got to do high classes again, and you know, I look tired. <laughs> I did not sleep very many hours while I was in Fiji. Uh, but that picture on the right is the chief of not just the village of Dama, but also Nassau and, and a couple other areas uh, there. And so we got there, and we're doing the clinic, and they call me over and say, hey, you got to come meet the chief. And um, his wife lives in Petaluma. And... And so I got to FaceTime with her. I've sent her a message since I got home. Um, and, and I just got to chat with him about what happened. She came and um, got trapped here during COVID because there was no travel back and forth. So she's been here three years. They haven't seen each other. And so this he's a high-ranking military official. He's worked for the United Nations. He's back home right now, but he continues to travel the world. He'll be here in Petaluma in about six weeks, and we're going to take him out and get to connect with him. And, and I, I just was humbled by how strange that I would travel halfway across the world, that we'd go to a village to do a clinic, that I would meet someone whose wife is here,
here who has been looking for a church for several years, and and I got to meet her, FaceTime with her, I got to talk to him, I got to pray with him, and, um, and as we left, I didn't know this part, they told me after, he was uh, telling people, that's my pastor. Uh, from from coming across the world and just spending an hour with him and um, encouraging him. And, and and I just thought, we probably shouldn't have needed to go halfway across the world to connect with his wife who lives down the street. But that's how much God cares about people, is that sometimes we haven't gone down the street, and so we will go halfway across the world, and he'll still make those connections. And... And so my challenge to all of us today is this. You can put the Bible verse up, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 and 19. Jesus came and he told the disciples, I have been given all authority in heaven and on earth. So go and make disciples of all the nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And the go, right, it is the verb in that. That passage, and Jesus tells us we are compelled to not sit in our church here at home, to not sit in our desk chairs at work, to not sit in our recliners at home, but, but there's an action that comes. There's a responsibility to knowing Jesus, to being forgiven, and that's to share that with other people. And I think too often we get comfortable. I can tell you, uh, Jackie was grateful that you prayed because of our treacherous travel. Um, I've been on this trip before. This was the best travel I've ever experienced <laughs> in Fiji. And so I thought like prayers were answered because this was incredible. Uh, we had mats to sleep on on the floors this time. And, and so so I, I just think it's, it's interesting because if we get locked in to the tunnel vision of our, the lives that we have. Sometimes we lose the blessings that we've received. Sometimes we, we don't see all that we're fortunate enough to have. Sometimes we lose sight that just by being born where you have been born, just by living here, by being able to attend to this church today, you won the life lottery. The, the thing with that, though, is it comes with a really great responsibility. And Jesus talked to rich people all throughout the scriptures, he ripped them apart. And he said, listen, it's really tough for you who are wealthy, you who are rich, to, to enter into the kingdom. And, and so it's a double miracle. And I really took away from this trip just how privileged we are, how honoring it is that God has entrusted us with the opportunity, not just to have much, but also to know Jesus. Because we get both. And and so then it's the responsibility of what are we going to do with the riches that God has given us. And some of that's financial, worldly wealth, but some of that is also our time, it's our energy. Some of it is where our attention goes. And our attention is so fought over in this world and where we are that, that it was nice to unplug and to get away and to just be able to focus on the Lord. And then you come back and... I work in a church, and there's distractions away from the Lord. So how much harder must it be for you who, who don't get that blessing? And, and so I just want to encourage you in this, that Jesus is worth your time. He's worth your energy. He's worth going for. He's worth making a fool of yourself for. He's worth the reputation that you've tried to build for yourself. He's worth embarrassment. I think even even sometimes here, I, I just think, well, I, I, things aren't perfect. I'm going to wait to to invite. I'm going to wait to to share. I've already shared with that person before. I don't want to bother and annoy them. But there's nothing more important than this imperative from Jesus to go into this part of the world. But also, it's my heart for every person who calls Adobe their home church that someday you will go on an overseas missions trip. That you will sacrifice your money, your comfort, your time, that you will go be uncomfortable, serve others, see God do miracles, and then come back and then try to see that here as well. You saw the numbers, Matthew shared them, over 345 salvations. Um, who knows what that means, right? That's how many people pray prayers. Your responsibility is get people to, to ask Jesus to forgive them of their sins, to give them the opportunity 
God does all the hard stuff. You don't have to be responsible for that. Over 400 glasses given, and like Josh said, the best thing that I've ever experienced in the world outside of leading someone in prayer to, to asking Jesus to forgive them is to put a pair of glasses onto someone's face. They don't have to say anything. You can see in an instant their eyes and face light up. And, and it's just incredible. It's the miracle of sight taking place before you, we saw over 600 people who not, if we had not gone, would not have had access to any medical um, opportunities. And so, uh, so I'm going to wait a week or two to launch whatever is coming in the future, so I don't jump the gun. But, uh, but we're going to be rolling out a, a missions trip schedule for the church over the coming years. Uh, Fiji is always an option. Global Passion is always going. Uh, and then I'm going to ask you to help me out. I'm not going to Fiji next year. I've traveled out uh, from between Zambia and, and Fiji. I'm going to stay home for a year, God willing. And, uh, and this trip is going to happen, though. And one of the hard things we had to do, uh, Jackie will attest to, is everybody in Fiji wants a pair of sunglasses. And we brought about 100 pairs, and we saw about 600 people. So that meant about 500 people got told, no, you don't qualify for sunglasses. Uh, they only prescribe them for usually the elderly uh, who had cataracts or different eye disease taking place, and so it would relieve them of some actual pain. Uh, or it would go to VIPs, chiefs, and pastors got um, sunglasses as well. But it's the worst to say no to someone. And then it's even worse to be like kind of in charge of uh, some of the clinic pieces where you have to tell the team, like, hey, stop giving sunglasses to people. Um, and so, so that's awful. And so uh, what I'd like for us to be able to do is to, to give sunglasses to the team that goes next year so that every single person will receive a pair of sunglasses. Um, they're going to cost us about $1.25 each. So uh, I just need to raise $1,000 for sunglasses by the end of today. So that, uh, so if you're here, like, yeah, I'm just going to do it today. Uh, so if on your way out, we'll tell you about offering stuff, but just let the Lord speak to you now. If you want to give towards that, every dollar that comes towards sunglasses uh, are, are going to send so that next year, every single person gets a yes. Uh, because here's the thing, the, the prayer station is at the end and they lead people to the Lord, but every step along the way does something in a person's heart as they go through the clinic, as they get ministered to physically and and they come to the eyeglass station and, and they're able to see and they're gifted these. It, it opens their hearts to the gospel when they get the opportunity to pray to receive Jesus. And, and so we want to open doors in people's lives and we're going to do that by sunglasses. So we're going to worship for a couple more minutes. I'm going to come back up. I'm going to ask you to give. We're going to introduce Veronica and her family to you. And then we're going to dismiss and my challenge to you is this. I don't want you to just leave today. I don't want you to think, oh, that was nice for those people that went. When, when people from our church go, you go. We are a body. We are the body of Christ, but, but Adobe is a body. And, and so I just want to encourage you in this, that you got to go on this trip. If you've given, if you supported, if you prayed, you're part of all the things that took place. And, Here's how I selfishly try to live my life. I just want treasure in heaven. I want credit for all the God things that I could possibly be part of. Because I don't get the credit. Jesus does. But I want to get to heaven one day and I want as many souls to be there because of the things that God let me do. And I want that for you as well. And I like to look at it that if you prayed for the team, if you went on the trip, if you gave it all, that you also share in that credit. And when we share in the credit, all we're doing is counting people we're bringing with us to heaven. It's why we continue to follow Jesus. It's not, God, give me more for, for me. It's, God, thank you for what you've done for me. I've received the greatest gift, and I want to share it with others. I want to go into all the world. I want to make disciples. Jesus said that to his disciples. You and I are his disciples. And so that is go into all the world, all of us, and make disciples. Your job is to make disciples. It's not 
bring them to church and let the church make them disciples. It's for you to make disciples. It's for you to go into all the world. And this is the part of the world primarily that you might be. But I just think God has huge plans for you, for us. And I want to see us get to, to bring as many people with us as we possibly can. Bow your heads, close your eyes. I just want to pray for you this morning, and then we'll worship.